the 2010s, a time that doesn't feel that long ago, until you remember that 2019 was five freaking years ago. But in this video, we're specifically talking about the early 2010s, from 2010 to 2014. And I'm counting 2014 just because, why not? Just watch any music video, TV show from the early 2010s, and you'll get a general sense of what people wore, or old YouTube videos too. Skinny jeans that came in a variety of colors, snapback hats, shoes with these big tongues, popular haircuts look like this, and Cookie Monster mustaches were popular for no reason. And at every Tilly's, you'd find these bracelets, and this was supposed to be for breast cancer awareness. And Silly Bands. Let's not forget about Silly Bands too. This was just a general fashion sense. And if you want more examples, just look at all the Little Big Planet characters that people made back in the early 2010s. More and more people went from having phones like this to this. The games I remember playing on early smartphones were Battle Bears, Minecraft Pocket Edition Lite, Angry Birds, Cut the Rope, and of course Flappy Bird. Now Flappy Bird was unavoidable. Everybody and their mother was talking about this game. People made skits on YouTube and Vine. Bird, a game I used to own, but then I lost my temper. Now I need a new phone. Frank, Frank, Frank. And Vine was a great app. You only had six to seven seconds to make a video and people got really creative when they made them. And at the very least, they were entertaining. And if you used Vine or watched Vine compilations on YouTube back in 2014, a song went viral that summer and people made Vines with this part of the song. I have gonorrhea. When did you find out? About a week ago. About a week ago, a week ago. Bro, watching TV was actually good. Cartoon Network had some of the greatest shows that Gen Z still looks back at fondly to this day. Adventure Time, Amazing World of Gumball, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and Regular Show. Bro, Regular Show is not a regular show, and that's why it was so good. It wasn't just any regular, old, boring show. And it's not fair that Star Wars The Clone Wars didn't get to have eight full seasons. It was supposed to, until Disney. And Disney Channel had some good shows too. Good Luck Charlie, Ant Farm, Phineas and Ferb, and many other shows that aired at that time. And don't lie to me and say that you've never tried to impersonate Perry the Platypus. I know damn well you've all done it once. <laughs> Around 2010, 2011, they would play these edits called Remix, which were these old Mickey Mouse cartoon clips made to sync with the song. And the songs that were a part of this short-lived series included all of these songs. Rocketeer, Another One Bites the Dust, and I Got a Feeling are some of these songs that I can definitely remember playing on the TV back in 2010. Nickelodeon was the channel I watched the least, but they still had some memorable shows like iCarly, Victorious, and- is a damn catchy song. Don't be surprised if you hear me singing this song unironically. To all my fellow Boomerang enjoyers, pat yourself on the back for watching Boomerang. This channel was underrated, and I was introduced to some great classic cartoons like Hong Kong Fooey and Johnny Quest. The most memorable parts of Boomerang wasn't the shows. It was the transitions and shorts that they had. Look at how much work they put into these transitions. They didn't have to do this, but they did. And guess what? They had another set of transitions. Action. But there is one short that looks down upon them. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. Nick and I and T Nick were the other channels I used to watch. Nick and I only played at night. They would air live action and cartoon shows from the 90s. The only live action show that I actually remember watching and enjoying was Full House. Very solid show. Just can't say the same for this one. The 90s cartoons were fantastic. Hey Arnold, Cat Dog, Rugrats. Hey Arnold was probably the best show, in my opinion. And once I fell asleep with Nick and Knight on, the very next morning, T Nick would be playing because they played on the same channel. And one show that I remember watching was the reruns of Zoe 101. But another thing that I remember from Team Nick, the top five music videos or top 10 music videos. And some of those music videos or songs that I remember include Rather Be, Cool Kids, She Looks So Perfect, and many more. If you watch Cartoon Network, you know that around 8 p.m., Adult Swim. It was the one channel you knew you weren't supposed to watch, but let's all be honest here. We definitely watched this in secret, or at least tried to. Some of the shows that I used to enjoy watching when I wasn't supposed to be watching them was American Dad, Family Guy, and Robot Chicken. And as a kid, I did not like King of the Hill, but it's grown on me because I've grown myself, physically and mentally. And trust me, King of the Hill is one of the best shows that I've ever seen. There was quite a lot of movies too, like the continuation of the Twilight series. <laughs> Toy Story 3, Tangled. I saw Tangled and Toy Story 3 in theaters back in 2010. And do you know what else was in theaters in 2010? A Sprite commercial. And not just any Sprite commercial. The Drake Sprite commercial. Damn, bro. I still can't believe 2010 was 14 years ago. And Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace in 3D. Yeah, that's right. You probably didn't know or even remember that The Phantom Menace came out in 2012 in 3D. That was my very first time watching a Star Wars film in theaters. And I'm not sure if drive-in theaters still exist, but if there's one close by to you, you need to go to one. Because because instead of buying the overpriced movie snacks, which is still an option, Damn. you can bring your own snacks like a bag of chips and not worry about hiding it. Okay, gang, keep your eyes open. Open for what? We're sneaking in. 
and you could be in the comfort of your car or sit in a foldable chair with a blanket over you outside. These are way better than normal theaters besides the listening experience. Sometimes the movie would be a bit hard to hear. Almost a 10 out of 10 experience. Every year between 2010 and 2014 had amazing music to offer. The music of this era was full of amazing songs and it sucks that I can't just list every song or artist that I remember listening to because that would take too damn long and we'd be here for hours. Some of the artists I remember playing during this time was full of Drake, Nicki Minaj, Kesha, Pitbull, David Guetta, Flo Rida, Calvin Harris, and of course Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift. Here's a list of some of my most memorable songs of each year. For 2010, it was Find Your Love, Like a G6, Rocketeer, Dynamite, Billionaire, TikTok, Nothing on You. We'll do two honorable mentions for each year. And the honorable mentions for 2010 go out to Teach Me How to Dougie and Not Afraid. And now the next year, 2011, Black and Yellow, International Love, <laughs> Headlines, and of course, Hardy Rock. Man, this song was so popular. You just had to be there. I remember my elementary school had shuffling contests just for the fun of it. And the honorable mentions for that year include In the Dark and Hold It Against Me. And 2012, Call Me Maybe, Thrift Shop, Gangnam Style, Feel So Close, Good Time. And the honorable mentions include Payphone and Somebody That I Used to Know. And now in 2013, Can't Hold Us, Power Trip, Get Lucky, Hold On, We're Going Home, Safe and Sound. And the honorable mentions go out to Alive and Sweater Weather. And finally for 2014, Summer, Trap Queen, Love Me Harder, Boom Clap, and I Don't Mind. And the honorable mentions go out to Fancy and She Looks So Perfect. The 2010s was the decade when I started gaming a lot more. During the years 2010 and 2011, I mainly played on the Wii and the original Xbox. The Wii was mainly games that I played back in the 2000s. And there was also some new games that I never played before. Raymond Rabbids 2. That game was just a bunch of mini games, but my cousin Jack and I loved this game so much. Smoke on the Water was our favorite song in the rhythm mini game that they had. And when I heard the original song many years later, it felt so weird not hearing the higher pitched voice singing the song. Another game that I loved playing was Wipe Out the Game, the game based off of the show of the same name. I mainly played the game with my roommate Cal on his Wii, but sometimes when Jack and Norman came over to my house, they would play the game with us, and man the timeless memories I have from dying of laughter playing this game. And of course there was Just Dance as well. I also had an original Xbox my mom just gave me out of nowhere in the middle of 2010. The games that I played on it was Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 and NCAA 08. I wasn't playing on the Xbox for probably more than two hours a day because I just, I just enjoy playing with my lego star wars sets just a lot more and i remember this memory from mid to late 2011 during soccer practice my teammates would sometimes talk about video games and i remember joining into their conversation talking about how much fun battlefront was on the og xbox while they were talking about halo on the xbox 360 but as far as i can remember some of them mainly the older teammates knew what i was talking about and agreed with me not too long after i got a ps3 for christmas i played on that console as much as i could since it was at my dad's house you know every other weekend <clears throat> two Christmases. I didn't have that many games on PlayStation 3, but the main games that I played was Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Little Big Planet 1, Little Big Planet 2, and Minecraft. I love the online multiplayer. When I played Zombies, I couldn't play solos, unless if it was Dead Ops Arcade. Zombies by yourself, especially as a kid, was horrifying, and it was a no-brainer that I played in public zombie matches. The memories that I've made are so fun to look back at. Like, for example, when everyone was downed and the last guy had to clutch up, and when he clutches, everyone would give this dude so much praise and from request. Damn it, Seneca, you're awesome. Dude, I love you. You're my <laughs> The Easter egg songs were straight up amazing. So amazing that I'm pretty sure I bought some of the songs on iTunes and listened to them through my iPod shuffle. Then there was multiplayer. When I played Black Ops 1 multiplayer, I loved the party games. The COD point system made it so much more risky and rewarding. And if you got in the top three, you'd make a lot more money. And if you didn't make it into the top three, you'd lose money. And I still remember telling people in game chat to double down and people wouldn't always listen. Double yeah, no down. response to you. Come on, do it, double down. But some of my favorite party game modes include Gun Game, Sharpshooter, and Sticks and Stones. And I still remember I would try to throw my tomahawk across the map in the hopes that I would actually get someone with it, like in those old clips on YouTube. But unfortunately, I've never been able to accomplish that. And on Black Ops 2, I didn't play too much multiplayer up until mid-2015. But man, when I started playing multiplayer, it was the best. Well-balanced game and fun overall. My cousins Norman and Jack had a PS3 and an Xbox 360. The PS3 was pretty much Norman's, and the 360 was Jack's. And the 360 only had one game that 
that I really liked and wanted to play, which was Modern Warfare 3. And I remember at the time that I played Modern Warfare 3, which was back in its prime, 2012, I mainly played TDM, Spec Ops, and Infected. And Spec Ops Survival was fun. It was my substitute for zombies. But Infected was fun. I remember I would always group up where everybody else was because numbers advantage and sometimes it was a spot that the Infected couldn't reach as easily, like sitting on the catwalk in Dome. Sometimes when I came over to their house, Norman would sometimes let me play on his PS3 where I'd play Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1 and 2, World at War, Battlefield, Bad Company 2, etc. With the stereo pulse headset on. And most people who played video games didn't have stereo headsets or have them plugged into the monitors or anything. And sometimes Jack, Norman, and I would all sit together and play some Little Big Planet 2. And whether it was story mode or community levels, we had so much fun playing that game. And I enjoyed that game so much that I decided I wanted to get into it. And I went with the first game because I cared about playing the game in order. And I was hooked as soon as I got access to the multiplayer. And I met many people and befriended them. Spending our time playing community levels, late night talks, just chilling in the pod, just talking about life, you know, similar to those late night party chats that we have nowadays that get all deep and philosophical, except for kids and young teens. And the countless hours I spent on the moon, either goofing off or just trying to make a level. But one of the other things that made Little Big Planet so memorable was its soundtrack. So amazing that I bought a few of these songs off of iTunes and listened to them on my iPod shuffle. And this soundtrack is better than amazing. It's freaking legendary. Another game with the legendary soundtrack was Minecraft. Now I got into Minecraft very late into my active PS3 years. I spent my time on creative and survival mode pretty evenly. It's also where I met some of my friends you've probably seen in my videos like Ty Man, Anthony, and Connor. And whenever I hear C418's music, especially the creative mode music, it always takes me back to the days of just being a kid, building a city or house, or the finance at Freddy's Pizzeria with friends. I believe it was the very first survival world that I had. I built this giant wooden house. It was kind of more modern looking and everybody that joined was always impressed with it. It was basically like a hotel. I, I had a few rooms for people to live in and a lot of some of these new people that joined in would get a room. It was like a streamer house, but in Minecraft and well before streamer house was even a thing because this was like 2014. I was also one of the very rare few people that had a PlayStation Vita and I played Little Big Planet, Black Ops the Classified, which you probably didn't know existed, Minecraft, Tearaway, and Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. Little Big Planet, Black Ops the Classified, and Minecraft were all multiplayer games, which was where I spent most of my time playing. And the reason I got Minecraft on PS3 was because of Minecraft on Vita. And I also used to watch a lot of YouTube on it as well. It was where I would watch Lego Star Wars Stop Motions, Vanoss, Venturian Tale, PewDiePie, Dragonic Fire, Mr. PS Vita Reviews, Roblox and Minecraft videos, and many more. And you probably don't know who Dragonic Fire or Mr. PS Vita Reviews are, since they weren't anywhere near as big as the other names listed. But what they had in common was somewhat similar content they made. For example, Dragonic Fire had a Little Big Planet series where he would play with fans and they would just play community levels while Mr. PS Vita reviews would play Minecraft PlayStation Vita edition with fans as well. And I remember I wanted to join and appear in their video so badly. All in all, the 2010s was a great time to grow up in. A time I will always cherish for the rest of my life. And I know I'm not alone in that. And comment anything that I may have missed because I can only talk about so much in one video. And I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane because I sure did. And eventually I'll upload another video about nostalgia. But remember, this channel is where I upload videos of me being an epic gamer. Just keep that in mind. Now the video ends.